Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss CMA uh, chapter number 2 or otherwise we can call unit 2. Here in this chapter we are discussing about uh, measurement and evaluation. Measurement, valuation and disclosure of investment and some short term items. The key areas in this chapter is accounts receivable, the treatment of accounts receivable, inventory valuation, inventory fundamentals and inventory valuation, then inventory cash flow methods and equity and some investment in securities and some business combinations. These are the major areas in this chapter. The weightage of this chapter is almost coming. We can expect a maximum four or five questions, but we have to practice 150 questions approximately in order to get to these four questions. So, so today we are going to discuss about uh, accounts receivable. Firstly, clearly understand what is the exact name of the chapter. Look here, measurement, valuation and disclosure, investment and the short term items multiple areas are covering in this chapter this is also a part of the basic areas most of the areas you are, you are clearly know that one anyway we are going to discuss some important points related to this second unit firstly we have to understand accounts receivable we know that accounts receivable is otherwise known as trade receivables accounts receivable is otherwise known as trade receivables Whenever you are preparing a balance sheet, you can see one of the most important asset under the heading of the current asset, you can see accounts receivable. Accounts receivable means those items an entity should collect from the customers. Normally this accounts receivable is happened for a company how whenever credit sales is there. Nowadays, the business is more competitive. Therefore, all the organizations are compelled to sell their products on credit basis. Whenever the credit basis, we are selling the goods and the services, there should be a period for the payment. It will be three months, six months, nine months, one year maybe, depending the company's uh, financial structure. So, credit sales happen, there should be accounts receivable is there. Whenever the credit sales is happening, we know that 100% we cannot collect from the customers. Sometimes some customers are unable to pay. We know that at, the, at that time bad seas happen for that one. So how these adjustments will be coming? Accounts receivable, we will get a clear picture about the accounts receivable from that one. So we are coming to the account receivable. Important point is accounts receivable is otherwise known as trade receivables. Receivables should be separated into current and non-current. This is a new scenario we have to discuss. Whenever you are recording receivables in the balance sheet, it should be separately recorded current receivables and non-current receivables. We know that what is the meaning of current. Current means we can convert it into cash within one year or the operating cycle of the business whichever is higher that is the meaning of current. Some accounts receivable can be collected within one year or the normal operating cycle of the business. That amount you can put in the current receivables. Number two, some receivables are already more than two years or more than the operating cycle of the business. At that time, we cannot record these receivables under the heading current. This is against the matching concept. We already discussed that some accounting concept, some accounting conventions are there. Whenever you are recording the transactions in the books of account, 100% matching principle should be done. Matching principle says that current year income should be matched with the current year expense only. Otherwise, your reporting will be wrong. Therefore, here, whenever you are recording accounts receivable, you should have a separate heading for current and non-current. Current means within one year or the normal operating cycle, we can collect that amount. That is the assumption point. Number two, some receivables we cannot collect within the stipulated period as we discussed before in the case of current. 
non current we cannot collect it in that is stipulated period therefore you have to separately split it into receivables into two parts one is current and the second one is non current receivables that is the first point we have to understand in relation to accounts receivable first point what is that one current and non current depending the time period number 2 non current receivables are we understand there should be some non current receivables are there non current receivables are those receivables which can be collected after a stipulated period that means after a longer period of time in this case this non current receivables are measured at net present value of future cash flow the sales is happen this year maybe the amount will be collected after 3 or 5 years at that time the money value is changing therefore non current receivables not notable not important point non current receivables should be measured at net present value of future cash flow net present value npv net present value of future cash flow because the money value is changing today is 1 rupees not equal to after 3 years 1 rupee money value will be changing from time to time therefore in order to adjust that one non current receivables are measured at net present value of future cash flow this is the important point in receivables then current accounts receivable we know that accounts receivable is the most important item we are showing in the balance sheet under the heading current assets whenever you are showing or recording accounts receivable in the balance sheet the amount should be showing current accounts receivable are reported in the balance sheet at the nrv net realizable value whenever you are showing accounts receivable in the balance sheet asset side the amount should be nrv nrv means net realizable value net realizable value or nrv is equal to total accounts receivable minus allowance for uncollectible amount allowance for uncollectible amount we can call as provision for bad debts normally in india we are calling as provision for bad debts but in international level and cma students should be say it is allowance for uncollectible amount so once again this accounts receivable should be shown in the balance sheet under the heading current asset nrv nrv means net realizable value net realizable value is equal to accounts receivable minus allowance for uncollectible amount this is the basic introduction about accounts receivable accounts receivable is there therefore allowance for uncollectible amount will be also there we know that accounts receivable there is no guarantee for the collection of accounts receivable some amount will be rest there or some amount will be unable to collect there this the amount unable to collect is known as allowance for uncollectible amount or we can call as bad debts bad debts simply means irrecoverable portion of sundry debtors is termed as bad debts irrecoverable portion of sundry debtors is known as bad debts here in cma american approach we are preparing not a provision for bad debts account or bad debts account here we are preparing allowance for uncollectible amount how much will be the provision for bad debts required based on the experience based on the past experience we know that some customers are unable or this much a percentage we cannot collect so we have to prepare always which account allowance for uncollectible account look here collection of full accounts receivable is not guaranteed there is no guarantee for the collection of full accounts receivable and allowance for uncollectible account should be prepared therefore therefore we have to prepare an allowance for uncollectible account for that one two most common method are there for measuring the bad debts in the in the point of view of accounts receivable there should be bad debts is there in order to measure the bad debts we have two important methods are there in order to measure and charge the bad debts or the provision or the allowance for uncollectible amount 
we have two ways to measure that one number one percentage of sales method percentage of sales method means credit to sales credit to sales is included where in the income statement that means trading profit and loss account area therefore percentage of credit to sales will be one of the method for measuring the bad debts how much will be the provision for bad debts maybe 5 percentage or 2 percentage of the credit sales this approach is known as income statement approach this approach is known as income statement approach if bad debts will measure on the basis of credit sales that approach is known as income statement approach number 2 percentage of accounts receivable sometimes you have to consider the percentage of accounts receivables percentage of accounts receivable means accounts receivable is the balance sheet item therefore this approach is known as a balance sheet approach percentage of ending balance of accounts receivable percentage of ending balance of accounts receivable percentage of credit to sales these two are the common method for measuring the bad debts in an organization two common methods are there first one is percentage of the credit to sales this is otherwise known as income statement approach number two percentage of accounts receivable at the end this approach is known as balance sheet approach then normally we are following normally all of the especially in india and we are studying in the, our previous classes we are doing what direct right of method we are applying direct right of method is not acceptable under gap direct right of method is not acceptable by gap reason there is no matching of income and expenses we already studied that one whenever you are recording a transaction it may be an income or an expense there should be a matching concept matching concept says that current year income should be matched with the current year expense only otherwise it will not be accepted by the gap therefore there is no direct right of method direct right of means bad debts directly right of to debtors account this is known as direct right of method in this case not accepted by the gap because there is no matching concept is following but tax purpose we are using the direct right of method so the important point to be noted that allowance for uncollectible account should be prepared all the companies in order to know how much will be the in order to measure the bad debts in order to measure the bad debts there is two methods are there income statement approach and the balance sheet approach now we can check how to prepare an accounts receivable account and allowance for uncollectible account there is two accounts we have to prepare and we want to know how this should be prepared this accounts receivable account what are the journal entries affecting accounts receivable account or whenever you are preparing allowance for uncollectible account what are the items coming here we have the journal entries here suppose the bad debts is happening there bad debts account debited to allowance for uncollectible account if any bad debts is happen you should transfer the amount to the allowance for uncollectible account second one is if bad debts is writing off how much should be writing off this year to the income statement allowance for uncollectible account debited to accounts receivable from these the two entries we what we understand all the adjustments related to the bad debts should be adjusted in which account only allowance for uncollectible account only you are not separately recording anything if any amount is previously written off coming if any bad debts is charging if any bad debts written off all the adjustments will be in the provision account or otherwise we can call as allowance for uncollectible account therefore this will not affect the income or the balance sheet because all the adjustments you are you are doing not through income statement you are adjusting from where only allowance for uncollectible account only if bad debts is happening if bad debts is written off if any amount received previously write off all the adjustments related to the bad debts are adjusted that account itself only there is no change your balance sheet item no change your income statement whenever you are preparing 
these allowance for uncollectible account. There may be bad debts will be there. There may be provision will be there. Some amount should be recovered should be there. Any transaction related to the bad debts should be recorded through the allowance for uncollectible account only. That means there is no change in the income statement. There is no change in the balance. It never affect both the prices. Look the entries for the bad debts. Bad debts account debted to allowance for uncollectible account. If the bad debts is right off, you convince that this much amount we cannot get it. Then the entry will be allowance for sorry allowance for uncollectible account debted to accounts receivable. Allowance for uncollectible account debted to accounts receivable. If any payment received previously, you write off. That will be cash or bank account debted to allowance for uncollectible account. From these three entries, we go we got the information that all the adjustments, all the informations related to bad debts should be recorded through which account only allowance for uncollectible account only. Suppose we can prepare an accounts receivable account is an asset. We know that one. Opening balance will be the debit side and the closing balance will be the credit side. This is credit size because your accounts receivable is increasing. That is why it is debited. Receivable account debited to sales. Sales always income. That is why it is credited. Then if any cash or check or any transaction received from the customer, that is known as cash or bank. Bank account debited to accounts receivable. Bank account debited to accounts receivable. If any amount write off from the accounts receivable, it will be coming because it is reducing your receivable balance. That is why here, whenever you are preparing an asset account, if asset account increasing, always it will come in the debit side only. If an asset account is decreasing, always coming in the credit side only. That is the modern approach says that asset is increasing debit and asset is decreasing credit. So whenever you are preparing accounts receivable account, what are the information? You will get a credit sales, you will collect from debtors, allowance for uncollectible amount right off. Three amounts we can get from accounts receivable account on. How much will be the credit sales? How much will be the collection from customers? And how much amount will be write off as allowance for uncollectible account? This is an account format. This is a statement of format. Look, opening accounts receivable. Credit sales happen, therefore increase. Cash collected minus receivable write off minus. Then at the end will be the accounts receivable at the end. Now we can understand or now we can check how to prepare allowance for uncollectible account. Sometimes you have to understand or you have to find out how much will be the bad debts write off amount or how much will be the allowance for uncollectible account ending balance. Some missing figure will be there in the CMA questions. We can expect such questions. So you have to understand firstly how the entries are coming. We already discussed that entries. Whenever the bad debts is recognized, the entry will be bad debts account debted to allowance for uncollectible account. When right of the bad debts, the entry will be allowance for uncollectible account debted to AR, accounts receivable. Then if any amount received from previously right off, if anything is coming cash account debted to allowance for uncollectible account. Look the entries or the account, the T account for preparing allowance for uncollectible account. This is the opening balance and this is the closing balance. Whenever the bad debts is happened, what is the entry here? Bad debts are debit and allowance for uncollectible account credit. Therefore, the bad debts is coming here. If any cash or anything received from previously write off, you can write by cash because this is allowance for uncollectible account is a liability item. Therefore, increasing will be always credit side, decreasing will be always debit side. Allowance for uncollectible account, which transaction is increasing that account, always you can give a credit. And which transaction decrease that account, you can give debit side. This is the right of amount. Because of the right of the accounts receivable, because of the right of the accounts receivable, our allowance for uncollectible account is reducing. This is the this is going to the income statement. This amount is the going to the income statement. Opening balance, closing balance, bad debts recognized, cash collection previously write off, then the remaining amount will be the accounts written off in the current year. This is the format of the un allowance for uncollectible account. If you want, we can prepare a statement model also based on this one. Opening balance is there. Bad debts recognized, increased, minus accounts write off, plus collection from previously written off, then we will get ending balance. Same model, if you want, you can prepare the statement model also. As a student, you should know both methods. Thank you.